On Wednesday, June 28th, 2023, Jenkins LTS 2.401.2 was released. My name is Darren Pope. I'm a developer advocate with CloudBees. And today we're going to be talking about what is happening in that release. Along with me, much like always, I have along Mark Waite. Mark, how are you doing? Great, Darren. How are you? Good. I think this one's going to be a fairly short one today. It is. It's, it's, it'll be brief and to the point. One being the operative word. Uh, but before we get to what one really means in this case, in case people haven't been here and they don't understand what Jenkins LTS is, I want you to give them a, a quick overview of how that works. Sure. So the, the Jenkins project, project releases weekly releases every, re every week, consistently, like clockwork. Periodically, we select a baseline from the weekly releases and that release is chosen every 12 weeks as a basis for a long-term support release. We then spend a few weeks stabilizing that, doing any backports we need to, and it becomes dot one. So 2.401.1 was based on 2.401 and is the LTS release for it. Then four weeks later, after the dot one release, we release dot two. Four weeks after that, we release dot three. And now, if there are surprises or out-of-band releases, we might sometimes release even a dot four. And we don't like seeing those very often. Uh, they, and, and, they are surprising, right? And we don't like surprises. We don't like surprises. Okay. Let's just go ahead and get into the release notes for this week because uh, it was uh, pretty quiet. In fact, it's so quiet. If we go to download, under stable, we'll go to change log, and at 401.2, Yes, this is correct. There was one change. There's one change that's published in the change log. There were actually oh. several changes, okay. but we intentionally frame the change log as something that users is important to users. For example, we made a change to allow us to, to better support newer versions of certain key libraries in the future, but we didn't have to tell users about that because it doesn't actually affect them as users. Okay. But what about this one? Because this one technically probably should have waited. It should have. You're right. And this was an exception, right? So WARN administrators, when their Linux operating system is reaching end of life, is a new feature. It's a feature that was added in Jenkins 2.406 weekly. But we chose, with approval from the Jenkins release officer and from the Jenkins developer community, that it would be okay to bring this new feature back into Jenkins 401.2 so we could give Jenkins administrators an additional eight weeks of warning about the eventual end of life of their operating system. Now, no operating systems ever go end of life, do they? Oh, never, never. Wait a sec, except Ubuntu 18, May 31st, and Alpine 3.14 back in March. And right, no operating systems ever go end of life. So I have a fresh installation of 401.2 here, mm -hmm. 401.2. I'll explain 0 and 0 at another date. We go to Manage Jenkins. And now we get this nice big red in your face, if you're right. an administrator, uh, end of life. In right. this case, I'm running on CentOS 7, which is going end of life in November. Well, well, and, and this, is a, this is an interesting, or this is a story, interesting or not is your call, but it, this is a, a slightly different story. CentOS 7 is a special case for us, and it's a special case for us because it's such a mature operating system that it brings some serious baggage to the Jenkins project. Uh, actual end of life for the CentOS 7 operating system doesn't happen until June 30th, 2024. So June 30th, 2024, the Red Hat and others who maintain CentOS 7 and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 will cease to provide security fixes for it. So it will be dead as of June 30th. And that would be when the Jenkins project would absolutely stop supporting it because the upstream operating system is no longer supported. However, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 and CentOS 7 are so complicated for us to support that we have decided to accelerate our end of life so that we will end life in November of 2023 for CentOS 7, not waiting until June of 2024. And this was the only 
OS that got that special treatment of moving forward, correct? Correct. And, and the reason, the, the compelling reason is that CentOS 7 as a 10-year-old operating system delivers components that are so far out of date they are still secure. Red Hat does a good job of maintaining the security of the thing, but for example, they deliver OpenSSH 7.4, whereas the current OpenSSH releases are like 8.9. So we are years behind on OpenSSH on CentOS 7. It delivers command line Git version 1.8 when the current version that's shipping is 2.41. And there are some horrible workarounds inside the Git plugin to try to hide the fact that Git 1.8 is so old and lacks so many key features. So you're saying, so you're Mark, saying Git 1 is old? Yeah, I'm saying Git 1.18 1 is 1.18, is I think it is, is is very old. And and really it's it's a good time for people to get off CentOS 7. Other projects are doing the same thing. There are other other projects like cPanel that have also accelerated their end of life for CentOS 7 and for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. It's just time for people to get off that operating system. So as we finish up with this video, I'll be going in and getting rid of mine. Well, well, and, and now, now to, to tell the story at full depth, the Jenkins project itself delivers a container image that is based on CentOS 7. One of our container images is CentOS 7 based and we will drop that container image. So it's not just that others are going to be impacted by this. We see ourselves that one of our container images will cease maintenance as of November 2023. It was good while it lasted. Well, and and it's been a great operating system and, and no no comment negative about Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. It's a great piece of work. It's, it's one of the longest lived operating systems on the planet. People love it. It runs well for them, but it's reaching end of life. And when the vendor ends of life, when the vendor ends the life of the operating system, I think it's okay for everybody else to stop supporting it. Right. I, I mean, I, we <laughs> certainly the Jenkins project is not going to adopt doing security fixes for somebody else's operating system. That's not going to happen. We we're we're busy enough just being sure that our own thing we deliver is secure. Okay. So going back to the change log again, that was the only item. Again, right. there were other items that were in the release, but not enough to make the list for users. So. And now, Darren, there are some things like this that are coming mm -hmm. in the future because okay. in addition to operating system end of life, the Jenkins project also wants to be able to do container end of life. Now, the operating system on which that container is based may not be end of life, but there are times when we want to say we're not going to support that container any longer, even though the OS is not end of life. And as an example, we deliver agent containers right now for Arch Linux. And I question the utility of that. I wonder who uses Arch Linux enough on an agent to justify it. So that will be a different effort and will probably appear differently in, or using the same mechanism, but will require a later Jenkins release. Correct. And this blog post that I have pulled up here is linked from refer to the documentation. Correct. So the blog so, post is the documentation. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And and there is a there is a, an official page that describes the Jenkins project's policy with regard to operating system support. It's that our Linux support policy page that you see there. Mm -hmm. And what it says is the message is we don't support operating systems that the operating system provider no longer supports. That seems logical to me. It, it does to me too, but we like to say it officially. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about for this release? No, that that's the that's the whole thing. If you look at the upgrade guide, you'll see oh. it says there is no no relevant change in in dot two. Yep, so nice and quiet. We like it. So four weeks from now, we'll be back with a dot three. Can we go to zero? Can you ever have a release that has zero on the release notes? 
Well, there we, always we, has to be one, well, right? There, there has to be at least one. So we had this discussion actually before the exception was selected to mm -hmm. to allow that. We thought, oh, there this might be a release that has zero changes, and it's possible. And at the time, the discussion hinted we would probably release it anyway because keeping mm -hmm. the clock of releasing matters. Right. Okay. So that's it. So we'll be back in four weeks. Now, as we're talking, this is the Thursday before July 4th holiday in the States. So for everybody in the United States, have a great 4th of July. Enjoy the fireworks. Enjoy all your cookouts. For everybody watching the UK, have a nice Tuesday. You totally missed that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very proud. I don't get political all pretty much anywhere, but that one was too easy. Hey, and it was go. polite. It, it, it was, was polite. very polite. We appreciate it. We appreciate our forefathers very, very much. There we go. See, you, you pulled me out of the ditch there. So that, that's good to know. Okay, so that's it. We'll see you again in four weeks with the dot three. We'll also have news about the new line that is getting selected in two weeks, I believe, ish. Uh, yeah, selection time is coming. I don't remember the exact date, but it's well choice Some of word. the baseline is coming. Okay. Thanks, everybody. We will talk to you again in about four weeks.